Hello and welcome to uh, the calculus video series um, for my uh, website and YouTube channel, The Perfect Square. And my name is Kevin Penninger, and I'm going to lead you through some Calculus 1 videos. We're going to start this series with, in Chapter 1, we're basically just going to introduce what is calculus in this first section, in this first video. And so, basically, um, what we're going to talk about in this section are limits. And the limits of a function are basically where you separate algebra and geometry and calculus. So once you start talking about the limit of a function, rather than evaluating a function at a number, then we um, will reach reach the calculus concept with limits. And so this I thought I'd throw this example I took out of a textbook. According to NASA, the coldest place in the known universe is the Boomerang Nebula. It's 5,000 light years from Earth and has a temperature of 270 degrees uh, Celsius. And that's one degree warmer than absolute zero, and that's supposedly the coldest temperature possible. And scientists have determined that absolute zero is the lower limit of the temperature of matter. So in other words, that's the lowest possible value. Absolute zero is the lowest possible value for the temperature of matter. And I credit the uh, European Space Agency and NASA for that information. So that's just an example of, of a limit uh, that you might run across if you start working um, some advanced calculus problems. But right now, calculus was actually developed out of uh, a few problems. Uh, the, one of the, some of the main problems were analyzing velocity and acceleration of a particle, um, studying the slope of a curve, uh, finding the rate that a function is changing at a point, and also uh, finding the rates that area and volume is changing, and also defining area, volume, and length of some odd-shaped uh, problems. Now, there's a lot of other things that can be done, but basically calculus was developed uh, from these uh, concepts. Now, without calculus, if you have uh, just algebra or geometry, you can evaluate a function at c. So I could evaluate this function, say, at, at x equal 1. But with calculus, instead of evaluating it at 1, we can talk about what would happen uh, if we approached the number 1 from either side. So basically, that's the difference. So here you could plug 1 into the function, but with calculus you can evaluate the, the limit of the function as x approaches 1. We'll talk more about that later. Um, without calculus, you know, with algebra, we could actually, if we had a line, we could actually find the slope of a line by just identifying two points. Well, with calculus, we can find the slope of a curve at any point. Like, for instance, the slope of this curve here would be one value. The slope of the curve here would be a different value and the slope of the curve here would be a different value. So with calculus, we can actually find the slope of this curve at any point. And we'll find that the slope of that curve at any point is actually the slope of the tangent line. So like you, each of these points, you would have a tangent line to the graph. And so the slope of the tangent line at this graph would be the slope of this line at that particular point anyway. Now to piggyback off of that, with with a uh, without calculus, we could find this. We could find the equation of this secant line, because obviously, if we had two points, uh, you can find the equation of the line that goes to two point goes through the through these two points. But with calculus, we can actually find the equation of this tangent line that just touches the graph at a single point. So that the difference is between the, the slope of the secant line 
actually represents what's called the average rate of change of an item or traveling along this along this graph from say t equal a to t equal b whereas here um, this represents the instantaneous rate of change at the particular point on the graph another thing we can do obviously is we can find the height of a curve at a value so obviously if we wanted to know the height of this curve say one then we just plug one into the function and we'll get the y value that would be the height but with calculus we can actually find the maximum height of the curve which would be this point right here so those are some things that we can do and here's some other things that you can do um, we can find the tangent plane with algebra we can find the tangent plane to a sphere with calculus we can find the tangent plane to a surface with uh, calculus we can find the area of a rectangle I mean with algebra the area of a rectangle with calculus the area under a curve and you can read these other things work done by constant force with algebra work done by variable force with calculus the center of a rectangle can be found without calculus the centroid of a region can be found with calculus and so forth you can find surface area without calculus you can find surface area of revolution uh, with calculus and so without calculus you can find the finite sum of terms with calculus you can find an infinite sum of terms so there's a lot of things that you can do with calculus that you can't do without calculus. The four major problems that were discussed and, and brought calculus into our realm were, were these four, the tangent line problem, velocity acceleration problem, minimum maximum problem, and the area problem. And they were introduced by Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz. Um, so if we talk about the slope of a graph like if you look at this function at this point the slope of the graph appears to be zero because that you have a horizontal tangent line but here the slope of the graph appears to be negative so the slope would be negative because if you look at this point the tangent line is a line that has a negative slope and then here the slope of the tangent line here is positive so we would say for this graph at this point the slope would be positive okay let's use the uh, let's look at the secant line discussion here and see if we can come up with a tangent line for the graph okay this curve here right here this black curve is f of x so that's our function now we want to find the slope something that represents the slope of the tangent line at a point so the point I'm going to choose is the point x equals c so if x is c then y would be f of c now I can't get the slope of this tangent line because I need two points to get the slope of the line so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually draw another line right through here this line here is going to go through these two points now notice that in order to get this point I had to travel on the x-axis from here over to here and we're going to call that Delta X so we had to travel Delta X units from here to here well if we traveled from C and we went Delta X units then that the x value of that point would be c plus delta x which means the y value of that point would be f evaluated at c plus delta x okay so now I can find the slope of this secant line which is what this is just using the slope formula so basically the slope slope of the secant line would be the second y value f of c plus delta x minus the first y value f of c all over the second x value c plus delta x minus the first x value c and then um, on the bottom the c's cancel and so you just get delta x so on top you get f of c plus delta x minus f of c all over delta x and some texts use h instead of delta x 
but this look should look familiar because this is actually what's called a difference quotient okay now but remember this is just the slope of that secant line so how could we actually get the slope of this tangent line well let's take this point and let's move it closer to C let's put it right here now let's look at the secant line now let me slide it up here like this okay hadn't got it right where I wanted it yet there we go all right so now if I move that point there notice the secant line I could still get the slope because I would still have two points okay but what if I move that point even closer so if I move it closer now this secant line is sloped like this but I still have two points now the point is is the closer I move it to this original point if I moved it very very close then the secant line would just continue to turn until it basically became the tangent line so basically to to get the tangent line what we would have to do is we could take the limit of this function as h or delta x depending on which one you're using we could take the limit of this function as delta x approaches zero or h approaches zero in other words this distance here gets smaller and smaller until there's there's basically no distance between this point and the other point and then what happens is this line turns into the tangent line and so that's how you get the tangent line uh, from the secant line problem and we'll look at that again when we talk about derivatives so let's took, take a look at what happens if we take this function x squared and we look at the point 2 4 and we complete this table so at 2.2 .2, if we square that we get a y value of 4.84 at 2.1 if we square that we get a y value of 4.41 and at 2.01 we get a y value of 4.0401 now if I calculate the slope between this point P and this first point it would be 4.84 minus 4 over 2.2 .2 minus 2 which gave me 4.2 if I calculate the slope between this point and the second point, I get 4.41 minus 4 over 2.1 minus 2, which is 4.1. And then if I calculate the slope between this point P and the third point, I notice I get 4.01. And if you evaluate it at 2.01, you're going to get even a number even closer to 4. Now, I know from calculus that the actual answer, you know, what is the slope of the tangent line of this graph at this point? Well, the slope is actually 4. But you can see that the closer and closer and closer I let x come to, as I let x approach 2, as I let x get closer and closer and closer to 2, you can see that it appears that the slopes are approaching 4. They're getting closer and closer to 4. And so that's basically the tangent line problem. And we'll, like I said, we'll revisit that when we talk about derivatives. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, the, the area problem. And then we'll move on to the meat of calculus.